to go. All right. Uh, welcome everyone to this teleconference meeting of the Caneo Open Space Conservation Agency. It's October 20th, 2020. Um, let us, uh, we will have a salute to the flag in just a moment. Oh, Michelle, I lost the screen sharing capability apparently. Okay, one moment, please. Okay, try again. All right, if you join Fantastic. me in the to the flag, I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, the to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America. And, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands. One, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, and with liberty, with liberty and, and justice, justice for all. For all. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That was a first. A remote, yeah. <laughs> remote okay. salute. Okay, yeah. may we have the roll call, please? Uh, Vice Chair Bill De La Pena, absent. Director Huffer? Yes. Director Jones? Here. Director Nichols? Yes. Chair Skay? Here. I do, I do see Bill Claudia Bill. online, but she's muted right now. Yes, Claudia. Ah, okay. Claudia, are you able to unmute and say yes to the roll call? Present. Very good. Thank you. Um, I don't, do we have any public comments that have come in? We don't. All right. We will go right to item 4A. Approval of appropriation from the Wolsey Fire Recovery Fund for a contract with Central Ventura County Fire Safe Council to support community fire safe programs. Staff. Madam Chair, members of the board, thank you for coming together on short notice for a special meeting to take this item up. We really appreciate it. Tonight, Costco staff are recommending that the board authorize the board secretary to execute a contract with the Central Ventura County Fire Safe Council in an amount not to exceed $45,808 from the Woolsey Fire Recovery Fund for the provision of community fire safety programs and services in Costco's uh, sphere of influence. Community fire safety is a partnership between open space management agencies like, COS like Costco, our local fire department and our neighbors. Achieving the highest level of public safety happens when each partner takes action to reduce fire threats and supports actions taken by others. Costco's open space boundaries uh, connect with developed private properties throughout the Caneo Valley. In many of these boundary areas, Costco performs brush management to reduce fire fuels adjacent to adjoining neighborhoods. These defensible space buffers provide safe locations for firefighters to protect homes to, and to keep flames and radiant heat far enough from structures to prevent ignition. In total, 425 acres of open space is managed as defensible space. This program, however, is just one contributing factor of achieving community fire safety. Actions taken by private landowners and preparations made by the Ventura County Fire Department are also crucial to success. Blowing embers, some from miles away, are the primary ignition source for most home fires and uh, most homes lost in wildfires. Protecting a home from embers is called home hardening, involves detailed work within the 30 feet from the structure footprint. And this area is typically located on private property. Providing services to assist residents in performing home hardening practices can help prevent wildfires from igniting homes. At the, July, at the June 24th, 2020 Costco board meeting, the board approved a framework for the allocation of funds received in a settlement for open space damages suffered in the Woolsey fire. The funding areas developed address both the losses of natural resources and the impacts the fire had on our community. Within this framework are resources to promote actions such as home hardening that can help prevent home losses in future wildfires. Immediately following the approval of the funding framework, Costco staff reached out to the community seeking partners for implementing uh, programs that address fire safety on neighboring properties. 
the Central Ventura County Fire Safe Council was contacted. The staff had recently supported a grant application the council was submitting for community wildfire planning. And the council was already producing high quality training events to assist homeowners with home hardening practices and programs. The Central Ventura County Fire Safe Council is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation established in 2009. Their mission is to reduce the threat of wildfire to farms, ranches, urban neighborhoods, and infrastructure through an aggressive program of action, education, and collaboration. Fire safe councils can be found all over California, and there are over 100 fire safe councils in the state. Having these organizations established in local communities keeps fire safety planning local and unique to the community's needs. Uh, the Fire Safe Council in Central Ventura County is a local organization that's uniquely qualified to provide these services and programs and to do so quickly as our community can use this information immediately to improve fire safety. The results of our conversation with the Fire Safe Council is the staff report you have before you today. Some of the results we expect our preparation of a workshop to train community members on preparing homes for and property for wildfire. Vetted community volunteers will be taught to conduct home ignition zone assessments to identify what landowners can do to make improvements on their own property. A minimum of 50 of these assessments will be conducted at local homes. They will also organize four community chipper days to help residents dispose of landscaping waste as they adjust landscaping for wildfire uh, safety. They will also produce a series of virtual webinars and distribution of educational materials on home protection and wildfire. Community fire safety is an important and timely community goal and Costco's support of this project will make our community safer. With that, I'm available for questions and I'm, we also have Mike LaPlante on the call who is the board president for the Central Ventura County Fire Safety Council. So you may ask uh, questions of him as well. Very good, thank you, Brian. Uh, board members, do you have questions of staff for Mr. LaPlante? Yes, uh, Director Heffer. Yes, um, I just wonder if, if probably Mike is, is best qualified to do this, just give us a, a brief background on uh, the staff or individuals you have in your organization and at least some, some examples of what you've done for other communities in our county. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I appreciate it. First of all, thanks a ton for our, for having me this evening. I'm pretty excited about this as I speak for the board. We're all really excited about this potential opportunity here. Uh, as Brian said, thank you, Brian, for your report. Very well mm -hmm. done. It, uh, the Fire Safe Council is really a grassroots organization. It started in 2009. It includes uh, members of the agricultural community, ranchers and, and agricultural owners, uh, and, uh, and also includes business owners in the local community um, and people very interested from the general population in fire safety. Um, so that's sort of the, the nucleus of our organization. And I think you put it well, Brian, with our uh, sort of our mission statement of uh, training and cooperation, collaboration and action. Uh, one of one such action is the chipper events that uh, was spoke of in the proposal. We've done a number of these. Uh, we probably do eight to nine uh, events a year uh, throughout the central Ventura County area, uh, anywhere from Moore Park. Uh, we've done some through the uh, Somas area, all through the Ventura area. We advertise them and people can either bring their materials to us in the central location, and we have a chipper in crew available that we can take those and chip those and, and provide the chip, uh, chip material to a proper location, or we'll do a curbside pickup. We'll register with us and we'll move through a neighborhood with the chipper in tow, and we will collect the, uh, the uh, chips there. In some cases, the property owners will like them redeposited on their properties for use in their orchards or around their homes, and we can accommodate that as well. So from that action perspective, the chipper events have been pretty, pretty uh, exciting and, and pretty effective and allows people to really be more uh, um, less concerned about doing some of the work they need to do and not having to worry about the disposal of the the branches and, and trimmings. Um, so that's the chipper event side of what we do. I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, as far as the educational side, um, we really struck upon something that we think is pretty exciting. We piloted this home ignition zone training this year um, in the Ventura area. 
it had originally started out as a, a two-day uh, training with the second day including an actual on-site visit of a of a home to actually look at the home and, and discuss safety measures and we were fully prepared to do that um, and had scheduled some of that and then COVID hit and so we had to quickly restructure that into more of a, an online uh, two session uh, virtual class uh, uh, taught by Woody Buska who's included in the proposal with our partnership with Surefire and uh, so the two evening sessions and then people have to commit then to uh, attend an on-site uh, hands-on walk of the pro of a property um, so they can really experience what it takes to look at a property and, and advise the homeowners. Uh, we take all the COVID precautions on that particular day. We look at the numbers of folks who may have to have two or three groups come through a property with appropriate physical distancing that has to take place. And so that's been pretty exciting for us. Again, it was a pilot uh, and it just took off. And so we're pretty excited about that. We ended up doing two of those this year, expect certainly more the next year. And if this um, proposal is accepted, uh, you will be kind of on the leading edge of bringing this to other parts of our community, most importantly, the Thousand Oaks and Greater Canal Valley area. Um, and I think it will, uh, it certainly supports our, our collaboration with, with COSCA. As, as Brian mentioned, we were awarded a grant to begin work on a community wildfire protection plan for the county in general, which will then within it have the opportunity for smaller groups to develop community wildfire protection plans for their individual neighborhoods and, and, and local communities such as Piru and Fillmore and others. Um, we're targeting underserved populations if we can. Uh, English as a second language uh, population certainly was included, so we're going to look at including them in that planning process. And so that's kind of where we've been in, uh, in the in very um, recent past. We do do some educational work beyond webinars uh, with uh, the Boys and Girls Clubs. We also have had a booth in the past at the county fair, but we'll see how that goes this year. Uh, but that's sort of, a, in a nutshell, what we're doing as a fire safe council, pretty excited about it and uh, really, really like having this opportunity with you guys. So I'm willing to answer any other questions. I hope that kind of summed it up for you and uh, I'll be more than happy to answer any other questions. Thank you very much, Mr. LaPlante. Uh, any other questions of him or staff? Yes, Claudia Bill Pena. Thank you. Good evening, Mike, and good to see you again. Hi, uh, good seeing you too. And Jim Friedel, good seeing you as well. <laughs> Thanks. Old days in uh, Thousand Oaks, right? <laughs> yes, I uh, have a question about the program since it started out, uh, starting out as a pilot program. How many homeowners would this particular grant be able to cover? Well, I think the, as I kind of review the proposal, you know, we're looking at probably uh, 50 assessments. Um, we'd like to group, uh, uh, provide a cadre of inspectors that would conduct up to 50 uh, inspections. And, and frankly, as a pilot program, we're kind of uh, doing our, using our best professional judgment on, on how many we can actually accomplish so that it's um, both of a high quality and sustainable. If uh, it indicates that we need to have more, then we'll certainly be willing and ready to do that as resources we provide. But as a minimum, it would be 50 uh, for this first uh, uh, this first uh, delivery. And uh, it seems pretty reasonable based on our experience with the other pilots we've done in the Ventura area that uh, with the cottery we might develop, uh, it sort of is a force multiplier when you provide the training and then have people then can go out and maybe even train the training for their community where it's appropriate or an HOA. We really look at a strategy this year of uh, hardening homes and then looking at the neighborhood and trying to get them to collab together to kind of look at their neighborhood as a, as a collective and then moving beyond the neighborhood to the community. And this is where this plays in, whether it's an HOA community or a neighborhood and we can target those areas where people are willing to have us on their property to help them understand how they can do better and using actually people from the local community uh, to do those inspections and not relying just on the fire safe council or a small cadre we sort of leverage that and, and we have more capability i think that way so that's exciting the reason i'm asking is because we have had an interest quite an interest from residents in our city to to help them with the fire prevention and brush clearance and so forth and it's more than 50 residents, more than 50 homeowners, I should say. I'm just wondering, are you going to be prioritizing these residents according to danger because there are areas that are more 
say, uh, perhaps more vulnerable than other areas in the city of Thousand Oaks. And so I'm just uh, wondering how you would handle that. Uh, will you take a group of residents who are in a neighborhood that may not be as vulnerable as other neighbors in uh, as another neighborhood in the city of Thousand Oaks? I could, I could answer maybe a little bit of that just to show up and kind of where, where Kosky is thinking. You know, we, we could front load some of the you know some of the educational activities out to HOA groups because I think we can get uh, some bang for the buck there. Um, so we may it you know there'll be other opportunities we could go through TOTV and things like that to try and reach a lot of people that um, maybe wouldn't be in for a a physical. Thing right then and there, I think we could. We'll use the information that we could develop through these programs. So I think we we have multiple ways of distributing this information and the, the capacity. Um, but we can, you know, we we can look at certain areas and try to make those decisions. And I think, if I may add to that, Brian, great job. I think that's exactly what we're looking at is targeting where we need to. Uh, he also mentioned the webinars that uh, will um, provide a larger grasp for a larger audience uh, um, acquiring the information and from there it'll probably grow again we wanted to set a level that was sustainable and, and of a quality that we would um, be able to do and i certainly expect it to grow i don't you know as it grows we'll have a cadre of, of, of um, sort of trainers and inspectors through cert or dart uh, that can go out and then you see 50 turn into 100 and then 150 but i think you're right claudia it would have to be a prioritization that will leave cost and the homeowners association in the city to help us understand where that has to be. We would leave that to you to sort of best uh, with our council, maybe where that's best applied. And then I do have a couple of follow up questions. Does the Ventura County Fire Safe Council also look at the issue of brush clearance or just home hardening? Well, um, it, we support brush, brush clearance primarily through the chipper event as people uh, uh, comply with the uh, weed abatement program every uh, spring. Uh, we uh, schedule those events in coordination with that because we know people may begin to move stuff off their property. Um, we have had uh, visits to uh, homeowners associations, for example, the, the Campus Park area and Moore Park which had a number of project areas that they've been working with the County Fire Department to address. And we helped them find the resources to do that. Um, we helped them remove some flammable vegetation below some homes, which with now they can begin to replant with less um, volatile fuel. So we work in sometimes just to connect people together, to find ways to uh, uh, lower a threat to a neighborhood, uh, such as an HOA in an open space. So we have done some of that uh, coordination. Um, uh, I think that's, you know, we don't actually do it ourselves. I mean, we're not equipped to do that. We will advise what we think is necessary. We certainly look back on the county's uh, uh, hazard reduction program as the guidance for that. At, um, any other fuel modification would have to be at the home, um, property owner's request and in good uh, sense and good common sense and, and appropriate for the area. And we just help them find resources if they need. The primary concern, of course, is property, and I am uh, wondering, you as a fire professional for, for decades, what do you think is the best way to protect your property? I think, in, in my experience, properties that are well-maintained from the beginning always fare better. Um, properties that where people take the time to look even as something as simple as ornamental vegetation around their homes that they think, well, it's it's an Italian cypress or it's a palm tree. It's not part of the a brush field. It's not a pine tree. But we found that those are receptive and, and people just have to recognize them. Uh, and they maintain their property as such. They look, it doesn't have to remove that vegetation by any means, but just maintain it. Make sure the under, um, all this, the litter on the ground is removed. Uh, dead branches are removed. Palm trees are properly maintained. If they, if they have them on their property, you know, pine needles are removed as necessary. Um, so I think those uh, pretty simple methods really help a ton. And then there's simple things around the house, uh, something as simple as changing the screen coverings over vents from maybe a quarter inch to an eighth inch screening, we find is making a big difference. Um, and awareness, um, 
as people approach the fire season, we're kind of kind of in the midst of ours now, but each spring education brings awareness and people can walk their homes and, and make sure they take action. They sometimes things happen, they don't even recognize like a boat cover that has leaves collecting in it. They don't recognize that as a fire problem. And yet, if we can get to them and just have them take a Saturday to walk the house and, and take care of that, um, their uh, level of uh, survivability leaps and bounds increases. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing how much better that is. You know, the ember shower we're receiving, um, we're seeing lately, that sort of ember zone we're worried about. Uh, I won't say it's unique, but it certainly seems to be enhanced as we're seeing fires that start a couple of blocks in from the black brush line, which is maybe a, a palm tree or a Italian cypress or some other fuel that's been found by an ember. And then one house starts to burn, you can see how that will grow to two and then six and pretty soon whole neighborhoods are are at threat and never really were close to the brush to begin with. And so that's sort of the intent of this program is to, is to highlight those risks. And my final question is, is does the fire council recommend certain plants to, um, to avoid uh, or to minimize the disaster? We have highly flammable trees mm -hmm. such as the eucalyptus, for example, or the Italian cypresses. Does the fire council have recommendations regarding landscaping or plants? Oh, yeah, what we actually do is refer back to whether that there are, are the State Fire Safe Council, um, the Cooperative Extension. There are so many good resources out there that are specific to California that do a great job in discussing alternative plantings that are fire resistive, but yet hold soil or very attractive. And we point folks in those directions. We have a full list of those resources on our website and we provide those during the training. So people would take advantage of those uh, well-developed and well-defined lists that are checked every year by professionals. And we just point people in those directions and say, these are your opportunities here. And we would encourage you to, to take advantage of that with landscapers or your own first to replant your property. Thank you so much. I'll note that the, the California Native Plant Society also has some good resources on local stuff mm -hmm. and we can build some of that into our website as well. And I'll also mention again, the uh, defensiblespace.org, which is uh, just recently launched, excellent uh, web-based uh, guide that was developed uh, uh, with a Technical Advisory Committee of Ventura County, LA County, Fire, National Park Service, Conservancy, Resource Conservation District, and other uh, professionals. And it does have, as you said, a list of no, no plant is fireproof, but there's really good native fire resistant uh, plants that can be put in. And it also uh, has uh, information on zones, uh, uh, the home hardening aspect of moving vegetation away from your home and, and structure out uh, uh, implementations. And uh, I also want to give a big plug. Fire Safe Councils have been really effective um, in the Santa Monica Mountains, in Malibu area, Topanga. And it is, as you said, Mike, it's sort of a uh, on the ground, individual homeowner, uh, homeowner association, um, they, people get the word. And if you know, one neighborhood does it, then it's like they can become the trainers for others. And it has been super effective in helping people recognize what they can do to protect their own home um, and, and uh, be uh, a little more aware of what can happen in a wind-driven event. Any other Yes, Mr. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mike, thank you for the, uh, first of all, for your role in this, because I know it takes a, a professional to have that type of background to really carry this type of movement forward. Appreciate that. Uh, I, I love the Fire Safe Council concept, been involved with it since the early 90s, very familiar with it. I love the grassroots concept, but also how it blends with the fire organizations, community organizations, and really makes it a, a full teamwork approach. The uh, question I have to you both is, is you're, from being the professional that you've been over the years and now in this role as a fire safe council, my feeling is over my years of involved with this is the homeowners always are looking out at the open space and the natural vegetation as where the fire comes is that's the problem. And it's not what's around their house or not even their house that's the problem. So how do you approach this to kind of bring that inner focus to say, this is how you can protect your home because as, uh, as, as uh, Director Bill DePinney was pointing out and, and also from uh, Brian, where we've had 
these communities speaking up saying, hey, uh, you know, what are you, Costco, going to be doing more because what the fire department says isn't enough. You know, you need to be doing more. So they continue to look out at Costco. Mm -hmm. So how do you change that focus and say, yes, this is what you need to do as a homeowner, not just point your fingers to the open space. How do you address that in these situations? You know, that's a very challenging question because certainly I agree with you that people look outside their properties and look at the threat and what it poses. And, wow. and, and I'm with you when you look at land management as you are, you're stewards of land and, and the complexities of that in this sort of a suburban, suburban urban community. That's a very complex issue when you have the sort of the California fuel types that sits in Chaparral that we love to have and it's beautiful, but yet it provides a bit of a threat to us. And, and our neighbors don't quite understand that the challenges it takes to manage that fuel or to maintain the stewardship of it. Um, I will tell you that certainly as a professional, uh, there are a, a full menu of things that people can do to lower the fire risk to their homes and also property owners adjacent to them have to consider when looking at, it, uh, looking at that as well. Um, and, and I'm certainly not in a position to um, uh, maybe support any approach as you are stewards of the land, you have to look at that and how you balance that management of that property, the protection of that land and, this, and its flora and fauna versus a pretty um, a densely built up suburban and urban area that I think jurisdictions across the state of California and across the West are all wrestling with this very problem, this very question. The things that make it um, enjoyable to live here from a, um, an aesthetics point of view and a natural point of view also provide some risks to us and people have to understand they live next to that risk. Um, I also would encourage uh, the Costa uh, board to always consider what are other options to maintain maybe a safer environment next to our neighbors. There's a litany of things to be done um, th that don't include uh, removing vegetation. And, and so that would be something that, that some people just think automatically that if we just remove the vegetation, we're safe, but then you have invasive weeds that come in behind it and they provide a risk as well. So. It's a real balance between the two. Uh, when I'm asked questions about, well, why don't they? I, I had a, a just a brief story about we we're doing weed abatement. A person was clearing their property, but their insurance agency said, well, they, instead of 100 feet to us, for us to insure your property, you need to go out 700 feet. Well, that 700 feet put it on another person's property line across their property line. Um, and so we said, well, as the as fire protection agency at the time, we can only go to that that ordinance driven 100 feet. And you have to work with your homeowner, your neighbor, I should say, to really uh, to work through that problem of what your insurance company is requiring of you. I think your point is well made as far as the brush type next to your home is a challenge. And we're also finding that even our neighbor's homes, which aren't kept up, are a risk to our home as well. And we have to look around the neighborhood and the community as we were talking about to, to harden the whole community um, because, you know, embers will fly a mile. We know that now in these wind-driven fires with a large column buildup and just how, what can you do to change that? You know, how can you, you know, take away that threat? There's ways to modify it. And uh, I certainly support some, but those are very complex discussions and, uh, and they take specific and scientific and surgical applications to some places. But uh, we think that home hardening uh, across the board, hardening a home, a neighborhood, and then a community is a, uh, is pretty, uh, I won't say it's low hanging fruit, but it's pretty darn near. We can really get to that early and often and it's pretty straightforward. So that's what we're supporting this in this proposal. No, and I wholeheartedly agree. And I thank you for that explanation because I, I understand it is very multifaceted and certainly as an open space agency, we wanna make sure that we're doing our part, uh, as you mentioned, as land managers, but also from the fire safety perspective, we certainly you know, look to the fire protection district for guidance and direction as well as enforcement on ourselves as well as for our neighbors. Uh, but I, I think, and especially like with the neighbors in West Hills recently, uh, the West, West Lake Hills, where again, they're looking across the street and, and if their focus is out there, they're not gonna be in tune to this type of a program of what they can do because they don't see their homes as the problem. And that's why I wanna make sure that we mm -hmm. somehow incorporate that into this effort that, that it's a team effort. Costco will do their part, city, park district, whomever owns the land will do their part, but the homeowners have to do their part because 
whatever is within 100 feet of their house is the most susceptible. It's not what's 400 feet across the street. So I think we need to continue that emphasis. And so when you do meet the homes, uh, homeowners in their backyard, you know, that message has to be loud and clear that we're all participating, but, you know, they have to do their part around their home to really make sure they're safe. Well, and that's where I think the partnership with Fire Safe Council makes a lot of sense because, you know, we do see uh, community fire protection as that partnership with, with the community, our neighbors and the fire department. Um, we've done a lot of work with the local fire department and we interface with them annually on these programs you know, and in trying to make sure that there's access to open space areas if they need them in firefighting, things like that. Uh, I think Costco's programs are enhanced by by a partnership with Fire Safe Council to try and get more of this information out. I think it's one of those things that, like Mike was saying, it's, you know, when it, when a neighborhood can come together and, and be successful, that it, it models uh, valuable information for others. And I and thank you, Brian. And I had just one other follow-up, if, uh, if I may. I don't want to take up all the time. But as you know, as the funder, so to speak, is Costco funding this program, will the people on the ground, whether that be these you know CERT or DART individuals or the Fire Safe Council individuals, will this be under the umbrella of the Fire Safe Council as the face of this this effort, as opposed to the fire department, the Costco, or whatever? Who's actually seen as the is the organization that's moving this forward? I think Wait. to Brian. Go ahead. Oh, I was I was just say the way I well, I mean, we see this as yeah, it's a funding partnership. The the expertise and the ability to go to to you know and the bandwidth and staffing and contractors to be ready to go out and do it. Um, I think it's it's a it's good to have uh, the fire safe council out front as. as experts in the field. Um, I don't expect Costco to be too far behind because we, you know, we are an essential partner in this, in this community and in this project. So I anticipate, um, you know, some visible footprint for Costco, but it, the most important thing here is not whether Costco is in charge or not, but whether we were able to make a difference in our community. And I think the Fire Safety Council as a grassroots local air, uh, organization is uniquely qualified for this. No, I, I would agree. And I wasn't saying that, that I thought that, that COSCA should be the banner waiver for all mm -hmm. this, but, but again, because it's a team approach and in many different facets, and I do think it's important to have a Fire Safety Council moving forward with that banner. And it just so happens that, you know, COSCA is behind it supporting it. Uh, and again, I'm also thinking as the West Bay Hills people that, that they don't want to think that Costco is turning around and saying, hey, look, you homeowners are the problem. It's not Costco because we're moving this forward. But instead, we're supporting it as a team and community effort. We want everybody to be aware of what we can all do to participate. That's I think we uh, speaking for uh, my board, um, we would not want to be the sole uh, banner waivers in this. It really is a cooperative effort. And I think even the proposal listed a number of folks that are involved in this. Besides the Fire Safe Council, um, you've got the city of, of, of Thousand Oaks that, that has shown some interest in it as well. We've talked to their staff. Um, uh, the certain DART programs, both within the sheriff and with um, the city, all those are partners. And so I think um, instead of saying, well, we're, we don't want to be sort of up front, I think we need to be demonstrating a partnership as equals potentially as a funder nice. and as, a, as an apple, um, the one that's applying the, the skill set um, and the others that are helping us get it done. So however we, we sort of portray that, I think a partnership is number one and we would support that as a board to really be a collaborative partnership um, to show that uh, as a neighborhood should come together, I think these same, uh, these community agencies as well should come together and we would demonstrate that I think. And we'd move forward in other, other ways to partner like that. So um, I appreciate the comments. Yeah, well, oh, thank you. And I'll, and, I'll, and I'll let staff kind of navigate that as you go through it. I'm sure it'll be a one step at a time process as to how this unfolds. But uh, thank you both for your information. Thank you, Madam Director. Dr. Huffer has a question. Go ahead, Chuck. First, first a comment. I think this is a, a great proposal. This is, this is a totally appropriate way to, to use some of the Woolsey fire recovery funds that we have. Um, a, a, couple of questions. I think, Brian, this is more toward you. 
I'm assuming, and I should never assume I know, but uh, since you're proposing a, a forty-five thousand dollar contract with the with the council, uh, the uh, programs that are mentioned in in the discussion, the uh, home ignition home ignition zone assessments, and the chipper events, these would be free to the public. Yeah, that's how we anticipate. The point was to try to make this as easy as possible, and I think that. You know, by funding those types of activities, I mean, those are real on the ground activities. And I think that they have the most benefit, you know, in, a, in the shortest amount of time. Yeah. And you, you touched a little bit on this, Brian, but um, getting word out to our community that this is available, you know, you, you mentioned putting it on TOTV and maybe some other places, but, you know, that depends on people going to TOTV or wherever else they might go to get this information. Uh, is there any thought about actually pushing this information out to areas that are particularly vulnerable, whether it's the Westlake Hills, people who are concerned, homeowners who uh, neighbor the open space so that we, we contact them to let them know that this is available? So uh, programs like this uh, work only when people know about them. So we anticipate that this will be uh, pushed out rather aggressively in terms of making this information available. Um, we have a lot, of, um, we have contact information, for instance, for all the HOAs and we can look strategically at reaching out. I mean, this is really for the entire community, but you know, we're, we're also looking, you know, at, at our neighbors, you know, these are, you know, these community areas are our neighbors and we want to work with them. And so some direct outreach will, will definitely be part of this. So if there are no other comments or questions, do we have a motion to make the grant? Move to approve staff recommendation. This is Claudia. Second. And seconded by Director Heffer. And we will need a roll call vote. If there's no other discussion. Vice Chair Bill de la Pena? Yes. Director Huffer? Yes. Director Jones? Aye. Director Nichols? Yes. Chair Skate? Yes. Very good. Thank you very much, Mike, for being being online and answering all our questions. We're a very exciting program. Well, I think very much, very much my pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for your time tonight. I really appreciate All right. it. Thank and you. I don't think we had any other items, so we are adjourned. Is that correct, Brian? That's correct until our next meeting on November 18th. Oh, all right. Coming right up. All right. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for Thank you, and good night, everybody. Bye. Thank you all.